Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar as part of our Shimadzu Solutions for Pharma series. I'm Brian Demansky, Strategic Collaboration Scientist at Shimadzu Scientific Instruments. I'll be acting as your moderator today, and our main speaker will be Dr. Myrtle Mandel, and he'll be talking about the application spaces and technology that relates to the new Nexera XSI BioInert UHPLC system, and how it can support your challenging biologics analysis. Before we start, I want to share a couple of notes for our viewers. The webinar console has a variety of items to help enhance your experience and interaction with us. In the screen, you'll see the following items. The slides will appear in the center of the console. Directly under the slides, you will see the related content list with clickable links to relevant material to our topic being discussed today. On the top left of the slides is the Ask Question widget. Please submit your questions during the presentation through this widget, and we will answer them during the Q&A session. Just below the Q&A box are survey questions that you may fill out any time during or after the presentation. On the right, are the moderator and speaker bios. You can expand the items here to learn more about us. And finally, at the bottom of the page are the icons to bring up any or all of these widgets in case they are minimized or hidden during the presentation. All right, let's get started with today's presentation. If you're just joining us, I'm Brian, your moderator. Today we'll be hearing from Dr. Myrtle Mandal, Pharma and Biopharma Marketing Manager for Shimadzu, and our topic is Breakthroughs in Biologics Analysis with BioInner UHPLC. With that, I'll hand it over to Riddle. Thank you, Brian, for the wonderful introduction. As Brian mentioned, the webinar entitled New Breakthrough in Biologics Analysis with BioInert, Biocompatible, and High Pressure UHPLC. During this webinar, we'll discuss Shimadzu's latest innovation of BioInert UHPLC system, Nexera Excess Inert, which utilizes a metal-free sampling flow path and corrosion-resistant liquid delivery system. Here are the contents. First, I'll give you a little bit introduction about biocompatible and bioinert. Then I'll talk about the instrumentation, especially technologies and key features. And then I'll talk about applications such as monoclonal antibody, MAP, antibody drug conjugate, ADC, protein and peptide analysis. Then I'll show you the application about oligonucleotide analysis. And finally, I'll summarize what are the take-home messages from the webinar today. Then what is biocompatible? A system in which metal parts are resistant to corrosion, which is suitable for mobile faces containing high concentration of acid, salts, and halogens. All of you know this kind of solvent system typically used for biomolecular analysis. On the other hand, bioinert is a system which is inert to biomolecules. More in general is the feature that reduces the absorption for compounds with strong metal absorption such as biopolymer. So this system used a material which prevent the absorption. So then Nexera Excess Inert UHPLC system that provides corrosion resistance and metal-free sample flow path, which means Nexera Excess Inert UHPLC has both capability of bioinert and biocompatible. Right side is the image of our Nexera Excess Inert system. And left panel, if you see the diagram, the yellow part is the capability of Nexera Excess Inert has, which means it is the high-end UHPL system with the biocompatible and bioinert capability. Let me take you through a little bit details of the system. If you see the left side, blue color writing, number one, low absorption UHPL system. We use non-metal sample flow channel pressure resistance of 105 megapascal. Number two, 
biocompatible UAS PLC system which has high corrosion resistance material that prevent the corrosion. Number three, system flexibility. We use new red set feeding method scouting configurations and other parameters that enhance the performance. Number four, LC40 advanced features, which has the analytical intelligence, ultra fast injection cycle time, ultra low carryover. In the middle panel, degassing unit, which has conversion of stainless steel to peak materials. Detector, UHPLC inert cell, low diffusion inert cell, so which prevent the adsorption even during detecting. Liquid delivery pump, which use flow path part change to titanium base. Auto sampler change the sample flow path to non-metallic. Piping, peak piping, reinforced with stainless steel that can feed up to 105 megapascal. Now, very right panel, mobile page, which has the ceramic suction filters. pH meter is optional. If you need, sometimes uh, people need it to check the pH system, why the timing shifted or something else when pH meter is important. And MR mixers, that means corrosion resistance, non-stainless base MR mixer. So we have four types. You can choose whichever you like for your interest. And flow channel selection valves, the weighted parts were changed to inert material. As I mentioned before, the fitting is rat fit. That means you can hand tight whenever it's needed. The instrument use TI hydrogen alloy and peak material. Here is the solvent system. If you see the suction filter is ceramic and other parts are highly corrosion resistance material, titanium hydrogen and non-metal peak. And the needle loop is um, either non-metal or metal coated inside with peak material and the needle is zirconia. And piping, especially enter system, is a peak based with reinforced with a stainless steel. And all the fittings, if you see here, it's a rat set fitting. That means you can use your hand to tie it. And for UV and PDA detector, cell housing is peak, and piping is also peak. Cell type is UHPLC, inert cell, or low diffusion inert cell. Features, high sensitivity, 10 millimeter light path or low diffusion is 5 millimeter flow path. So as you understand, entire system used either a corrosion resistance material or peak. Therefore, it become bioinert and biocompatible. Nexera Excess Inert has the slogan, which is experience newfound clarity. Bioinert means metal free, low absorption, plus biocompatible, plus high end UH PLC system, which can sustain 105 megapascal or 15,000 psi pressure. Clarify, clarity means discover, clarify invisible peaks with superior separation and non absorption. Unconstrained recovery and sensitivity, which means it reduces sample loss due to absorption to metal and acids, excellent sensitivity.
assure reliability and reproducibility which is reliable for data taken from metal absorbing compounds with high reproducibility it has clear resolution without restrictions means improves peak shape and achieves excellent chromatographic separations for any kind of biologics analysis this instrument can be used for method scouring for biologics analysis this is the schematic of a method scouring system you see here for mobile phase a there are four solvents and for mobile phase b uh, for other four solvents so that means you can blend the solvents as the way you want so automated method development platform can be used to develop method automatically and this solvent blend capability will help you to make a different different solvent system using multiple columns and that columns can be used up to 12 you may be thinking nexera access inert has the capability of bioinert biocompatible and high end uhpl system what about the consumables as absorption can occur in the uhpl system as well as the consumables therefore shimarzu can provide columns and vials with absorption separation technology if you see here sampling desolting or concentration sample stress and analysis all of the things can be attained with minimal or no absorptions so what you can provide torist a stiff torist a ultra torist a glass vial torist a bio vials and torist a 96 well plate and simpack bio columns if you combine all this with the instruments you will have the capability of biomolecule or biologics analysis with highest level of sensitivity and selectivity i hope you are clear about the instrumentations and key features now let's move to the applications first i will discuss about monoclonal antibody map antibody drug conjugate adc protein and peptide analysis this is a simple schematic with features all kind of analysis for map like uh, scc hic or hic iex reverse space or lcms based analysis for aggregate fragment disulfide bond methanic isomer lysine isomer or peptide mapping glycan analysis or antibody drug conjugates which means all kind of analytical procedures can be done with high level of selectivity and sensitivity using these instruments this is map impurity analysis analytical condition especially for scc uh, these are very common procedures i am not going to talk details about it only to mention this uh, column used here is 2 micron particle size which means this system used for uhplc condition you see here the peaks are very sharp they are multimer monomer and degradant these degradants here basically impurity and if you zoom it uh, the peaks are really sharp and separated nicely that means uh, any kind of impurity analysis for map can be attained with very high level of selectivity map and adc analysis analytical conditions here i am going to only highlight two things others are common one is 2 uh, micron particle size use in the columns and another is the 15% uh, isopropanol or 2 propanol used 
and for mobile phase B. The reason uh, MAB and ADC, all of you know that MAB is a monoclonal antibody, but ADC is antibody drug conjugate, which is also a MAB, but a, a small molecule drug is added to the MAB, that's why it's called antibody drug conjugates. But when this conjugation occurs, in many times, it becomes hydrophobic, and that hydrophobic uh, capacity created an interactions between the column particles and ADC. Therefore, we need to break that. So we use here 15% of isopropanol, and I'm going to show the results, how it helps. These are the MAB and ADC analysis results. Let's consider left panel, which is non-containing 2-propanol or isopropanol. Upper panel is the non-conjugated MAB, and lower panel is the ADC. And the right side, which is B, containing 2-propanol or isopropanol. In the upper panel, same as left panel, which is non-conjugated MAP, and uh, lower panel is the ADC. In both sides, upper panel for non-conjugated MAP, which is red color, are remained same. But for ADC, lower panel, which is blue color, in the left panel, the peaks are really low intensity and tailing. But on the other hand, right side, the peak become very sharp, which has the highest level of separations. So that means you can understand that 15% isopropanol help attain the peaks with highest level of sensitivity, separation, and selectivity. Here I am going to talk a little bit about drug to antibody ratio, DAR, analytical conditions for ADC analysis. When an ADC is developed, a, a small molecule drug, which is normally cytotoxic, is connected to the DAR either through the disulfide bond or using an endoglycosidase. So what will happen if this small molecule drug is not connected properly or a lot of small molecules floating to the solutions these solutions, when will go to the patient's body, which will kill not only the cancerous cell, but also the healthy cells. Therefore, it is important to characterize these drugs and the antibody that is called drug-to-antibody ratio from the beginning of the development to the end while marketing that is drug. So the patients will be safe. Therefore, uh, we have to characterize very carefully. So everything, all analytical conditions remain same, except we use here 2.5 micron particle size column. Uh, you may use sometimes a normal HPLC condition, but we, we like to show here, we used here UHPLC condition. Here is the ADC analysis for DAR results. As earlier, red color is the non-conjugated map, and blue color is the ADC. If we zoom the DAR area, you can see clearly DAR0, DAR2, DAR4, DAR6 are nicely separated with very high resolution peaks. So that means this method is useful to analyze DAR qualitatively and quantitatively, very effectively. Protein aggregate analysis, analytical condition, here I would like to highlight two things. One is Shimpac biodiol 300 column, which has two micron particle size, and the mobile phase, one is containing sodium chloride, another is non-containing sodium chloride. I would like to highlight another thing that protein aggregate analysis is very important as these aggregations can not only reduce the efficacy but also sometimes 
may convert to a toxic material. Therefore, it is very important to do a thorough analysis for protein aggregations. And I will show you how we develop these analytical conditions and how we set up the different parameters. Before explaining the results, I want to mention three things. Nexra Excess Inert is operated by Lab Solutions MD, and this Lab Solution MD has QBD platform, which used to automatically develop these methods using Chimpac biodial column. Now, if you see the left side, you see a lot of peaks. And if you zoom these peaks, you can see the individual peaks. That means these samples were injected many times. And here I am showing you four to see how these peaks were. So you see these peaks are highly reproducible with very nice resolutions without any peak shift. So that means the, the peak did not shift at all. Here, I would like to show you a little bit about method optimizations. The left side, if you see, is the relationship between chromatographic performance and sodium chloride concentrations. Excessive is the sodium chloride concentration, which is millimole per liter. Y-axis is the symmetry factor on the left side, and right side is the resolution. And the gray color is the symmetry factor, and the black line is the aggregates and monomer. You see, when sodium chloride concentration is 50, the symmetry factor starts decreasing, and it remains very similar until 250 millimole per liter. And the resolution also increasing around the 100 to 250. So we find that um, when like a 100 millimole per liter is highly reproducible with high level of resolution and considerable level of symmetry factors. If I Move to right panel, where is the relationship between flow rate and peak resolutions? If you see, the gray color is the monomer and fragments, and black color is the aggregates and monomer. So here, x axis is flow rate, which is ml per minute, and y axis is the resolutions. As mentioned earlier, that uh, sometimes you need to find the more reproducible peaks. So although point 0.1 gave the highest uh, resolutions, but we need to consider a 0.2 ml per minute has the highest level of reproducibility and reasonable level of resolutions, which is still very high. So we can consider our next experiment with the 0.2 ml per minute for all other experiments as well. Left side is the, the relationship between chromatographic performance and PAs. X-axis is the PAs, Y-axis symmetry factors and resolutions. Gray bar is symmetry factors, black line aggregates and monomer, gray line, monomer and fragments, we found that pH around 7 gave the highest resolutions and the lowest symmetry factors, considerably lowest. Therefore, we consider pH around 7. And right side is comparison of biodial and traditional columns. Biodial columns is the black peaks and the commercial or traditional column is the red peaks. So if you see carefully, biodial column gave the very sharp peak 
with the highest level of separation. Here I'd like to switch my gear to show you some oligonucleotide analysis results. As all of you know the importance of oligonucleotide nowadays as it is not only used for vaccine development but also other chronic diseases such as cancer drug development. IEX chromatographic method used for analytical conditions. I would like to highlight two things on its SHIMPAC bio IEX QNP column, which has the particle size of 5 micron. Another is the mobile phase. Mobile phase B contain 1 mole per liter sodium chlorate. All other parameters are very common. This is the analytical performance in nucleotide analysis. If you see the table, it has three options, type, system, and column. The first is standard UHPLC, Nexera XS, Chimpac Sifter C18, 120 column. And second row is new metal-free sample path, which is Nexera XS inert, used the column Shimpac Scepter P18-120 metal spray. Now, we used mixed standard solutions of AMP, ADP, and ATP with 50 microgram per ml measured in the standard UHPLC in the left side and Nexera excess inert which is green color in the right side. If you see the first two peaks in the left side with the very poor resolutions, separations and intensity, on the other hand, right side you see these two peaks are nicely separated with the highest intensity. That means Nexera excess inert give the highest level of resolutions, separations, and area. Here is the analytical performance in nucleotide analysis and how we develop the methods. So if you see left side, which is the transitions in symmetry factors of ATP by the number of injections. X-axis is the number of injections. Y-axis is the symmetry factors. Orange color is a standard UHPLC. Blue color is Nexera excess inert. If you see for orange color, it's a, the symmetry factor is really high in the first injections and it's getting slightly low in the last injections. On the other hand, blue color symmetry factor remained low from the first injections to the last injections and it remained constant. Now if you move to the right side, which is transition in peaks area of ATP by number of injections. X-axis is number of injections, Y-axis is area. Same as before, orange color is standard UHPLC, blue color is Nexera excess inert. For orange color, you see the first injection is low with the area and it's getting slightly higher in the 10th injections. On the other hand, for Nexera excess inert, remain same from the first injections to the last injections and the area is way higher than a standard UHPLC. So that means when you want to do any high throughput analysis for the biological analysis, Nexera excess inert will be immense helpful. Here is the one example of high throughput results. I would like to highlight three things. So we have the separations of different length of oligonucleotides. 
and separation of different phosphate groups and also the separation of impurities based on three protecting groups. We inject uh, many times of these five mix of oligonucleotides, which you can see the based on the length. And uh, when I do that, they are highly reproducible. You can see that these peaks are highly reproducible and from number one to number five, five types of oligonucleotides, they are nicely separated with the highest level of resolution, sensitivity, and area, and also the peak shape. Now I would like to show you quantitative results and comparisons between standard UHPLC and Nexera Access Inert. If you see the left side, which is the calibration curve for ATP, standard UHPLC, and if you see the right side, which is the calibration curve for ATP using Nexera Access Inert, in both curves, X axis is the concentration microgram per ml, and Y axis is the area. You can clearly see that the left side is not very quantitative, which has the R square value is 0.99. On the other hand, right side, the R square value is almost 1. So that means due to the reproducibility for the analysis, Nexera excess inert gives the calibration curve with the highest level of sensitivity. So far, I have shown you only LC results. Here, I'd like to show you LCMS results. For LCMS, we use UHPLC for a standard and Nexera access inert. And the column was Chimpac receptor C18 and Chimpac receptor C18 metal fray. All other parameters remain same. For a mass spec, uh, we use ESI in negative mode uh, with the MRM channel of M over G 803.5 to 95. All other parameters are very common. Nexera Access Inert improved quantitative analysis in LCMS. If you see here, Nexera excess inert with a metal free column chromatogram is red color. And black color is the biocompatible UHPLC with a stainless steel body column. You can see clearly the red color improved significantly for intensity, area, and peak shape. More specifically, if you see the upper panel, biocompatible UHPLC with a stainless steel body column, which has a high carryover. That's why it gave like a R square value only 0.97. On the other hand, lower panel, if you see Nexera excess inert, with metal free column which uh, carry over almost zero and gives the highest level of sensitivity for quantify and make the calibration curve. If you see the R square value is almost one. So Nexera excess inert with metal free column gives the highest level of sensitivity, improved quantitations and with the lowest or no carryover for LCMS analysis for biomolecules, especially for oligonucleotides and other biologics. Here is the quick application summary for Nexera excess inert. On the upper panel, nucleic acid and oligonucleotides require reversed phase ion exchange size exclusions, which can be done using Chimpac scepter, Chimpac bio-IEX, and Chimpac biodial columns. On the lower panel is the antibodies, antibody drug conjugates, and peptides, which required peptide analysis 
peptide mapping, aggregates and fragments, charged variants, and conjugates. That analysis can be done with these instruments using Shimpac Astra, Shimpac Velox, Shimpac Biodial, Shimpac Bio IEX, and Shimpac Bio Heat columns. What are the take home messages from this webinar today? I hope you all are convinced that this new bioinert and biocompatible USPLC system is demonstrated here that provides corrosion resistance and metal free sample flow path that is very much useful for the biologics analysis. This instrument has the capability for using dedicated UV fluorescence and PDA inert detector solutions as well as mass spec compatibility that means it is independent to the detectors. This instrument is also highly effective for the analysis of MAB monoclonal antibody, ADC means antibody drug conjugates and their impurities which were carried out using SEC, IEX, reverse phase, and heat chromatographic methods. You have also seen that oligonucleotides were analyzed with the highest level of sensitivity and selectivity. Finally, I would like to say that the Nexera Excess Inert demonstrated its effectiveness as an analytical tool for accelerating biologics development. So you can use this instrument, your go-to instrument for your biologics development. I would like to acknowledge my global colleague from Shimarju, Japan, and some of the colleagues from Shimarju, United States, who helped to accomplish this great study. Thank you all for your great contribution. If you see on the top, Nexera Excess Inard has the slogan, Experience New Find Clarity. The instrument is in the middle, and its both side has the mass spec. That, that can be used single quad, triple quad, Q-top, etc. It was also can be connected to the PDA, UV, and fluorescence or other detectors. For any additional information or questions, even after this presentation, please feel free to shoot me an email. My email address is mkmandal at shimarju.com. Please don't forget to check our dedicated website, which is www.solutionsforpharma.com. And finally, I would like to thank you very much for your kind attention. Let's thank Dr. Mendel for such an engaging presentation. Uh, again, under that related content list, you can find more information, including the Nexera XSI BioInert brochure and application notes that demonstrate the capability of this no-compromise UHPLC solution for bioanalysis. If you haven't had a chance yet, we'd ask that you please fill out the survey questions on the left-hand side to provide feedback and request additional information. And we encourage you and your colleagues to sign up for the Shimazu e-newsletter by responding to that survey question number three. The monthly newsletter includes information regarding upcoming webinars and events that encompass a wide variety of application areas. At this time, we're going to begin our live Q&A session. And we thank the audience for submitting uh, their questions through the widget. We have a number of those questions coming up here. Let's go ahead and see what we have first. So one of the questions that has come up is, 
uh, talking about the buffer systems, and it looks like a lot of the things that we're talking about with regard to these bioanalysis applications wouldn't necessarily be compatible with mass spec. How is it that we uh, find solutions to analyze these by both mass spec and uh, UV and PDA? Yes, that's correct. Um, there are many biologic analysis that because of their solvent system are limited to UV. When we want to add MOSFET, we can use system like our multidimensional perfinity system for online digest or other initial separation, desalting, and reverse space suitable for mass spec analysis. Excellent. Thanks for that answer. Uh, there was uh, another question. Let me paraphrase. Uh, thanks for the presentation about the BioInner UHPLC. Are the methods described here intended to be QC, uh, QA type analysis, or for stability studies? Uh, what what realm do those encompass? Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, all methods and the system described here are applicable for quality control and stability testing, but you must validate according to your lab protocol. The system provides a platform that is easy to use, whether your goal is USPLC performance to enhance stability studies or robust high throughput needed for the quality control. Excellent, excellent. Um, there's an application-based question that came in as well, asking uh, what base pair reagent was used in the ion exchange chromatography shown for the oligonucleotides? So for the oligonucleotides, I think um, the slide I have shown, I, it, it is used, I have to go back uh, to check that. It's um, for separation isopropanol and um, just normal, normal IEX, you know. But there was So I think some... that in the, the studies that I've seen on the application notes that have been published yeah. uh, from, from SSI, we've used either TEA or TEAA, uh, depending on yes, what the goal I'm, was I'm and whether or not we it, wanted yeah. it to be mass spec uh, friendly. So yeah, I know that those are, are common reagents that are used in the, the demonstrated chromatography. Uh, let's see. It had been mentioned uh, during the talk, but there's an, a request for clarity on how peak tubing is able to sustain such high pressures, the, the 105 megapascal or 15,000 PSI that the system can handle. Can you speak to that, Myrtle? So as peak is reinforced with a stainless steel, this means the weighted surfaces of the tubing, including the ends, are peak coated which contributes to the biomolecule inertness and durability, while the outside stainless steel supports high pressure stability up to 15,000 PSI. Excellent, excellent. Uh, one of the other questions that has come in is related to whether or not the system, the bioinert system that we've described is also compatible with more traditional uh, pharmaceutical small molecule products and reverse phase HPLC and UHPLC work? I think that's a great question. Sometimes if any molecules with their uh, metal absorption, like um, it's uh, in sticking to the metal, I think in that case it will, it will be really helpful to analyze those kind of molecules. Like uh, if molecules is too hydrophobic, that, that also will be helpful, the method described here. And are there any limitations because of the, the uh, materials that are used in the inert system? Are there any restrictions that would make it difficult to use for more traditional small molecule analysis? No, I, um, I personally use biocompatible uh, for both the small molecule and large molecules, and I think uh, there is no such effect unless some molecules um, which have the interaction with the with the peak materials. That's um, excellent. Out of my knowledge. Excellent. Uh, one of the other questions that we have that came in was uh, that there had been mention of small molecule impurities, uh, but no mention of N-glycan characterization. Um, 
can you comment on that for potentially monoclonal antibody treatments? Uh, would this system be suitable for that type of analysis? Oh, this is a great question. So, so far, the small molecule impurities of ADC, uh, we have some studies that um, require analysis by LCMS. In our ongoing work, we have demonstrated the effectiveness of binary UHPLC with our QTOP and triple quad for the analysis of these impurities quantitatively. And N-glycan is being studied, not only the bioinert, also bio compatible or all systems uh, by LC fluorescence mass spec to generate a comprehensive study making use to the high performance bioinert UHPLC. Excellent, excellent. And I think we have, uh, looks like one more question here to follow up on. Uh, and it mentions that in one of the slides, there had been mention of uh, Lab Solutions QBD method development approach. Uh, can you comment on how that works? I think this is uh, more of an informatic question, sir. so I will want you uh, to answer this one. Okay, thanks, Mr. I can. I think I can jump in and, and comment here. Uh, in the application example that was shown, there was the use of the new Lab Solutions method development software. And part of the functionality of that software is a QBD or quality by design module that allows you to create a robust final analysis based on a number of different stress testing to different parameters uh, that can be varied within the method that would be typical of instrument variation that occurs over time. What you're trying to do is find optimal method conditions that allow small instrument variations to be tolerated without getting to an out of specification result. And when you're trying to do new method development, especially things that will be handed potentially from formulations and development off to a final QC for product release, the automation of that analysis of these multiple factors allows the QBD software to do complex statistical analysis and convert what are equivalent to many, many experiments into an easy to understand visual representation of the method robustness. So it's a wonderful package that we can offer uh, and it's in line with what's expected for international drug distribution and ICH compliance coming down the road. And we certainly anticipate that FDA will view QBD designed methods as favorable uh, as pharma moves forward. So I want to say that uh, that's a, a wonderful question, and we hope that we can provide more information to folks if they have any desire to learn about that. Uh, unfortunately, we are reaching the end of our allocated time for the webinar today. Uh, we do want to thank the audience for, again, their attention and all of their interesting questions. If there are any additional questions that have not been answered, please do feel free to submit those into the question widget, and we will follow up with each of you individually for any questions that we were not able to answer today. Thanks again for your participation, and we'll send you an email link if you wish to re review the recorded version of this presentation at any time in the future. We encourage you and your colleagues to attend our upcoming webinars. Uh, the registration links for future events will come through either email contact or that uh, emailed update. So I want to thank everyone for their participation once more and wish you all a wonderful day.